Uh, Mike Brown um, rarely talks, but when he does, it's always a treat. It's always a treat. I always look forward to uh, when, when Mike Brown addresses the media. Uh, but no, look, um, there was a lot of good stuff yesterday to take away uh, from Duke Tobin addressing the media, Zach Taylor addressed the media, and Mike Brown addressed the media. They did their media day yesterday, um, and there's a, a lot to dissect, a lot to take away. And, and I know we touched on it a little bit yesterday. I think the biggest takeaway, regardless of whatever storylines come out of this, is that the biggest news to me um, for Bengals fans and even non-Bengals fans who are paying attention because we all know how good Joe Burrow is when he's healthy, they basically came out yesterday and said he is 100%. He is ready to rock. He is ready to go. Um, and that is a good thing as far as that's concerned because we've had no the, the Bengals have had noisy off-seasons the last couple of years. Even though last year at this time it wasn't noisy, there was a lot of people who were kind of sitting back waiting for the, for the announcement of the contract to get done. Once that got done, we thought it was full steam ahead. And then, of course, that dreary day when the, the calf injury happened when many people thought man I hope it's not an Achilles there was so much uh, qu so many question marks out there um, but I want to start with with Mike's Mike Brown's um, comment yesterday that had a lot of people talking he, he said he made a mistake he said that he misstepped and, and there's one thing I like that he said too because we all hate meddling owners right like we we don't like the we like the way Jerry Jones spends his money but we don't like the way he spends it as far as he feels now he has the right to just basically be the coach to be the GM to be everything but that is his right that is his team um, but we know last year we talked about that calf injury. Joe Burrow obviously comes up hobbling in, in camp and everyone's holding their breath. And obviously they rest him for pretty much the entire preseason. He, he gets ramped up in the week heading into week one. Did not look very good against the Browns, obviously. Now the elements did not help that situation either. I don't think he looked very good that entire first month uh, of the season. But there was a point where the offense was just not producing anything. Um, the passing game was flat. The run game was flat. There was no, I mean, the, Joe Burrow wasn't throwing touchdowns. I mean, it, it was pretty rough to start that first month of the season. Everyone remembers that clip of Mike Brown um, basically with the golf cart coming up or with the gator or whatever it was, and, and Joe Burrow and him are kind of driving around practice or whatever, and everyone's like, man, to be a fly on the, not really a wall, I guess, but on the steering wheel, whatever you <laughs> wanted to call it, what are they talking about? I don't think we ever got what they were talking about until yesterday right. when he basically, Mike Brown, the owner, came out and said, I told him I didn't want him to play. Uh, I told him I didn't want him to play. Uh, I overstepped, uh, you know, and ultimately he ended up playing. Uh, so then the media kind of laughed. And I thought that was an interesting point because we never hear people complain about Mike Brown a lot. Never heard anyone say, oh, he's a meddling owner. You know, his decisions may get in the way of some of the success or non-success, depending on what season we're talking about. But overall, you don't really hear his name a lot throughout the season. Uh, that's a good thing. But before I dive into whether or not I like that he said that, I'm curious your guys' thoughts. When you heard that he told Joe Burrow uh, on that golf cart or whatever it was that, hey, I don't want you to play, and he ultimately played anyways, and then he comes out and says, I made a mistake, I overstepped. Did he overstep? Because I'm very curious how people are going to perceive this. I actually didn't mind him telling him to not play as far as that's concerned. Your thoughts? We'll start with Jacob. I, I do think he overstepped. That's just kind of my view for sports as a whole. I think the coaches should coach and the owners should own, and those two things should be separate. We see how that's kind of taking place in Carolina right now with David Tepper taking a lot of control of that team and how they really haven't been able to gain any ground in this rebuild. But yeah. at the end of the day, the main takeaway I had was I love the transparency. We don't see Mike Brown talk a lot. We certainly don't see owners of any team saying they made a mistake very often. So I loved to see Mike Brown come out and just, you know, stay level with the media, tell him what happened and tell him he thinks it was a mistake. And hopefully we don't see the owner meddling with the lineup ever again. So I, I really liked this clip, even though I didn't necessarily like that he was, you know, meddling with the lineup. I don't think he overstepped. He owns, when, when you own the team, I think you have a fair say. And when you're star quarterback, when the guy you're paying hundreds of millions of dollars to is clearly not well or maybe not ready, or you think he's not ready to go, you say, I don't want you to play. I, I, that's my, it's my opinion. Now, if he was saying you're not going to play. That's uh, what I took it as. That's what I thought. I, I didn't know which one it was, really. I, he, it's either you're not going to play, I'm not letting you, or I don't think you should. If it was an I don't think you should – I have no issue with it whatsoever at Agreed. all. Agreed. Uh, if, it, if it was a, you're not playing, this is my decision, then yeah, maybe you're overstepping because that's not his job to do it. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's the owner of the team. He can say whatever he wants. I take it the same way as Jacob did, though. It's, it's Mike Brown looking like a competent owner. He's saying, you know what? I messed up. Whether or not he did mess up, I think it's irrelevant because him admitting to it and his, him admitting fault is, is a big step for Mike Brown. I don't think you've seen that out of him and I don't know I've been a fan of the Bengals for 25 years I haven't seen anything like this from Mike Brown so 
Uh, I thought it was cool to see, and and yeah, it, it's 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 very evident that the Bengals franchise took such a turn when Burrow got here, and you're seeing that right now everywhere, everywhere. The when the owner of the team is saying, you know what, I messed up. I shouldn't I shouldn't have been involved with Joe Burrow, whether or not he should be playing. That's a big. That's that's massive. So yeah, I'm I'm happy that Mike Brown came out and said it. I think it's pretty damn cool that our owner at this very moment looks like one of the most competent owners in the league. Is this? A story of a of an owner overstepping, or is this a story of an owner having no real sway in his own <laughs> building? Yeah. Because if the owner is gonna be <laughs> gonna tell the quarterback, hey, he's gonna, hey, you're not playing this Monday. We got a game on on national television, and I don't want you to play. And they got off the cart, and what did Joe Burrow do? He continued practice, he went through the week, and then he played. So if if you're the owner, if you have the overall say, and I think we can agree that if he did come in and say that and he didn't play, that is overstepping. But in the same jest, if he's telling the quarterback, hey, you're not playing, and the quarterback go ahead, just plays, how much sway do you have as an owner? I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I'm just saying... What does it say when you come out and say, "Yeah, I told him he wasn't he was he wasn't going to play," and then he went out and played? What does that say about the organization? Right. That's what I'm wondering. So that's and Jimmy, we did skip over. My apologies. No, no okay. right away. So again, he comes out says, "I overstepped." Do you think he overstepped as an owner when he pulled Joe Burrow on that cart and said, "You and you're right." Was it you're not playing? I don't. I, I think the I, quote I gotta was, go back and listen to the quote again. I didn't have it lined up. So he either said you're not playing, or I don't want you to play. It's all basically the same thing. But he said he, he feels bad about it even to this day. Yeah, I I don't think he should feel bad about it at all, considering he he owns the team. Um, he's making a majority of the decisions in regards to the team, where the money's going. He's paying Joe Burrow fifty five million dollars a year. I think that he should at least have somewhat of a say. In turn, if Joe Burrow is hurt and this injury could get worse and that could jeopardize his future with the Bengals, I think if Mike Brown wants to say, I don't want you to play, I don't, th I don't think he has any problem doing that. I don't think he should have a problem. And I think it's kind of interesting s seeing him kind of walk it back. And I do think that it is cool that he came out and said that because that's something that we might have never known uh, had he not said something about it. But no, I think he, he owns the team. He's paying Burrow $55 million a year. He's the highest paid quarterback in the league. I think he should get a little bit of a say in terms of if he's injured and going out and playing and he doesn't want that to jeopardize his future with the team. I think that that should be completely fine. The quote from Mike Brown was, I went out there to tell Joe Burrow he wasn't going to play. Okay. He played. So obviously that could be, uh, you know, talking about it months later, you know, he, maybe he told him, I don't want you to play, but... Well, it's like, so what happened? Because, listen, if, if, if Trey's here and, he, and he, he, he does all the things, but if he comes in and he says, Elliot, you're not on the show today. Guess who's not on the show? Elliot. So when the owner... I've seen this movie before. I've seen this movie before. <laughs> when, he says, hey, when he says, hey, Reed, you're not on the show anymore, guess who doesn't get on the show unless Casey gets a torn AC or they're sick, whatever, he, whatever he's got up there at Mason. But here's the thing. He went out there. They had the little the little cart ride. The, the it was the the secret meeting on the <laughs> golf cart, and he played. Was there a subsequent conversation with Zach Taylor? Was there a subsequent conversation with Duke Tobin? Was there a subsequent conversation with Joe Burrow? Or did it happen right there? He said, "Joe, you're not playing." And up until kickoff, Mike Brown believed, "Hey, I told our franchise quarterback he wasn't going to play." He's not playing today, and then he just goes and sees Joe Burrow go out there for, for the opening kickoff, for the opening drive. What happened? There's so many more layers to this story that I just don't understand. And, I, and, and maybe in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter because I think we can all agree that you don't want an over, owner overstepping. Typically, that doesn't end up well. Look at the Cowboys with Jerry Jones. Like, they've been a good team, but they haven't been to a conference championship in 30 years, and that's one of the most proud organizations in professional sports. But what does it say when the owner outwardly says, I told our guy he's not playing, and he went out and played four days later? That, I don't, that's, that, there's, there's dissent in the ranks. That, I don't, I, but, but here's the thing with that. I, you look at the Bengals. Who's more important to the team right now, 
Joe Burrow or, or Mike Brown, it's it's almost a shift. I don't want to compare Joe Burrow to LeBron James, but when LeBron James goes to a team, he is the most important person in that franchise. Owner, GM, coach, doesn't matter. It's LeBron's show, and everybody else is beneath him. Joe Burrow with the Bengals, I, I don't, again, I'm not comparing Joe Burrow to LeBron James, but it's almost similar. If we don't have Joe Burrow, we don't have a lot. So I, I, I'm just saying right now, I think if, if, if Mike Brown's outwardly saying this, I almost think that Reed is somewhat correct that there is a shift in the power dynamic of the Cincinnati Bengals because it's Joe's world and they're all living in it. So this is where the wrinkle comes in. And I like how you said that because, again, how, how great Joe Burrow is. But go back to this time. We're a couple weeks into the season. Think about Joe Burrow three weeks into last season is not the Joe Burrow we know when he's healthy. When Joe Burrow's healthy, it's back-to-back -back AFC Championship games. When Joe Burrow is healthy, he's taking them to a Super Bowl. When Joe Burrow is healthy, they have Super Bowl expectations. And they did not look like a team that – they did not look like a Super Bowl caliber team the first month of last year. And, and look, at the end of the day, we know Joe Burrow's health played a big role in that. He was statistically, I know Casey got mad at me the last time I said this. This isn't really a Kinner opinion. I mean, if you go back, it was national media and a lot of media had the opinion and the, and the stats backed it up. Joe Burrow statistically was one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL the first month of the season last year. He was completing 55% of his passes. He had only thrown two touchdowns in the entire first month. They were stalling drives. They couldn't get the run game going, which wasn't helping, obviously. That's not a shot at Joe Burrow. That was the limitations that were set, the production that was limited due to the injury. So I'm going to defend Mike Brown from this point. He's apologizing. I wouldn't apologize. You look weak, Mike Brown. You finally had people around the league looking at you saying, man, you righted the ship. You got things back together. And now you look weak because it looks like the success that the team is having is in spite of you. I told him he wasn't going to play and he played anyway, anyways. Kind of like you talked about. It's like, well, who's running things? At the same time, Mike Brown, I thought, was the only one that was making sense at that time because he shouldn't have played. There was a lot of people that were questioning whether or not he should have been playing. Now, Bengals fans will tell you he gives them the best chance at winning. Joe Burrow, the name does, but not Joe Burrow, the quarterback in September of 2023. He just was not good because of the injury. Not that he's not good. He just wasn't good because of that. And then you see Jake Browning and how good he was. And obviously ranked, I saw a list the other day, the number one backup quarterback in the NFL and, and this, that, and the other. Bottom line is, I just thought it was weird. I would also love to know what set this up. Like, what, what, did, did he just come out of nowhere and just start talking about this from last year? Was the I really want to go back and listen to the questions leading into it that set Mike Brown up to say this. Like you said, it's not the biggest deal, but it does give people, like me and others, an opportunity to pounce and say, well, wait a minute, if you're the owner and you tell your quarterback he's not playing, and then the coach and quarterback say, I don't care what the owner says, you're playing – it's a weird dynamic. Winning can erase that, but if they start losing, people will use this and say, oh, there's dissent, as you talked about, Reed, uh, in the Bengals front office. Yeah, the final thing I'll say before, because I think we got to get to a break here, is I, I believe the question came out because I think it was Marshall Kramsky, uh, one, of the, one of the local uh, anchors here, sports anchors yep. in, uh, in the city. He's the one that got the clip of Joe Burrow going on the cart last year, and that question clearly sat on his mind because it was such an unprecedented event where the owner comes out mid-practice, takes the star player for a little golf cart ride around the facility, brings him back, drops him off. He's waiting, beckoning for a chance to ask Mike Brown this exact question, and he did. And Mike, and Mike Brown was very honest, was very forthcoming, but I still think that there is so much, there's so much to unpack here. I don't even want to do the whole, did, did, should Joe Burrow have played? Because it doesn't matter at this point. That's the story for last year. The better story is, is what... What, how much authority does Mike Brown have in the, in the building? Which I think if you would ask Bengals fans five years ago, they wanted Mike Brown to have zero authority in the building, and maybe that's what's becoming. But it is interesting to see the face of the organization, the face of the owner of the franchise, coming out and saying like, hey, I told a, I gave a very direct, I gave a very direct order, and it was not followed. And he laughed about it. He laughed about it. I thought that was so interesting.